ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode of the Lukewarm Cinema Podcast. My name is Austin. Today I'm joined with George and your boy Christian. And uh, we're doing another another Star Wars episode, everybody, because we love Star Wars so goddamn much. Well, we thanks to last weekend, George is now like, y'all got y'all got any more Star Wars? Is there any more of that shit? Where is it? <laughs> no, for real though, I I. I'm bought in 130%. As you guys know, I mean, I talked about it a crap ton last episode about my interest levels peaking. And after seeing uh, Rogue One, which we watched tonight, yes. I'm stoked to go watch four. Uh, the, I'll, I'm just going to go Rogue One, four, five, six. Yeah. And then watch one, two, three. I'll come back to those. Three, three will be so much sadder after you watch four, five, and six and see mm-hmm. like what that leads to. Yeah. It, it's like, oh, you're like, oh. I'm stoked for it. I'm stoked it's for good. it. It's so good, though. I'm very glad um, because Rogue One was made uh, like one of the newer ones, right? Yeah, it's it was the Disney. It came out in 2016. It's one of the Disney films. Uh, if it if it were up to me, it's only the only Disney one worth watching. <laughs> I I don't like Seven, Eight, or Nine anywhere near as much as I like Rogue One. And Seven, Eight, Nine was made by Disney. Yep. Okay. Uh, Seven, Eight, Nine, Rogue One, and well, who's uh, the director? I it was, I was like, yeah, I was like the uh, director. I can tell you right now. Different. What I was Gareth it? Edwards. Okay. JJ Abrams did seven and nine. Okay. Yeah, what the who George Lucas. He did he did one, two, three, four, five, six. Got you. So he's like the He's the he's the creator, creator. of the, and then he sold it to Disney and now he's like, wait a minute, I shouldn't have done that. Do you guys know the dollar sign on that? What uh, he sold I can, it to Disney for? Give me like two seconds. I can find out. I don't know. I'm like, sure Disney broke the bank. There's like the movie rights, then there's like the merchandising rights. Well, Disney already super... had Disney already had merchandising rights. They signed that in the 90s. Oh, because, really? Because at Disneyland, you can buy Star Wars stuff before yes. the uh, 4.05 billion. Oh. I'll sign that paper. Okay, so it was half in cash and half in shares of Disney stock. And that'll okay. never. I feel like Disney stock will never. Uh, it's still in the hundred. I believe it's still in the hundreds. I could find out right now too. Yeah, go ahead and look okay. that up, Jamie. Pull that, bro. Up. This one hundred and seventy-one dollars and forty-four cents a share right now. Mm. Okay, it's down one point nine nine. Uh, so down one point one five percent. A very brief sidebar: like Disney does all kinds of stuff that like pisses people off. Like, uh, the new Mulan was bad, or. Or they did something unethical or whatever. Well, uh, they canceled annual passes. Okay. All right. As of yesterday. Mm-hmm. So, it, and you know, and it's like, uh, Disney's like the shithead like corporation. If the product's good enough, people are not going to give a fuck, bro. Oh, no. D- oh, Disney Plus now? I can watch all the damn Star Wars movies. Like, fuck. Now I can TV? only watch all the Disney movies. Fuck. Dude, they could literally be M- Mc- McHitler of the 21st century. <laughs> and people are gay. Oh, d- Oh, a, a new live action movie? Oh, okay. Here's, uh, here's $14. Oh, yeah. So, sidebar. Is, what's the, like, do you think there's a lot of pressure there behind them? Because I figured there would be, you know? Oh, yeah. You can absolutely. only, because you can, I think what they've, what they've done in the past couple of years with the remakes of The Lion King, you see Mulan being remade. It's like. See, I just watched Mulan uh, over the weekend, and I didn't think it was that bad. It's definitely not the original. But I think that's kind of a good thing. Mm-hmm. It was it was good. Like I watched it and I was like, it was all right. I gave it. I think I gave it like a solid six out of ten. Wasn't bad. I think we're gonna do that one here next uh, next episode or maybe the next few episodes we'll do that one. But I thought it was okay. But yeah, like Lion King. Like we talked about that with Joey. Like how the fuck do you have a movie that has better technology to do animation and you're just like Simba? No, I get. I completely get. I I just. <laughs> I think the pressure that I was referring to is like, do you come out with, you know, just a whole new slate of Disney princesses and stories and characters, or do you just keep remaking? So that's the thing that, uh, so Bob Iger, who is up in, I think he's once again, the, uh, let me, I forgot what he is. He's like the head, uh, head dude. Yeah. The name sounds Yeah. He's the head dude at Disney. Uh, he was up into, and then like, he saw the uh, the pandemic and he was like, I'm retiring. Smart and man. Then, and then like oh, a month wow. in, they were like, no, no, no. We need you. He's like, all right, I'll come back. Uh, he is uh, executive. Well, now he's executive chairman hmm. for Walt Disney. But he was, I want to say, the CEO. Yeah, CEO. 
um, people were, you know, in the Disney universe, and please go listen to the Magic Our Way podcast because they'll explain this way better than I will. Uh, from him between Michael Eisner and Bob Iger, it, everybody thinks that Bob Iger is super conservative with how Disney approaches things. Like they did, uh, you know, the world from the Avatar film, which is like over 10 years old now. Mm hmm. Like they're not making a second one. What the fuck's the point? <laughs> Why do you make a world of a movie oh, that's yeah, over ten dude. years old? Nobody. There was like a hard cutoff where everybody's like, "Bro, who gave a fuck about Avatar? Why? Are they, why did they do that? Why are they doing a second I mean, one?" It looks very nice. The that was it. Though. Nice. Nobody like a few years later when like all the other movies look just as like uh, like as impressive as Avatar. Nobody gave a fuck about Avatar anymore. It was oh, yeah. like, oh, dude, I don't want to watch that blue shit. <laughs> that was one of the. Like first movies that I ever remember, people blowing up about a uh, Blu-ray. Yeah, because mm. they were even more blue. Yeah, right. <laughs> Literally, we've invented a uh, Sony. We've uh, invented our own type of disc uh, that's more expensive. Um, the blues are even bluer now. Sixty dollars. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so Disney Disney's been very conservative, and that's the problem. I like I have an issue with it. Is why are we doing all these remakes when you could just take that time and effort and just write a new story? Granted, it's very hard. Like music, it's very, it's very much impossible to write something that hasn't already been somewhat done already in music. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of the same thing with movies, mm -hmm. unless I, you let it like a like a, a meme lord like Christian write a movie, then it'll just be super offensive. But it'll be it'll be fresh hell content. Yeah. yeah, and I think uh, I think the new generation of like you know gen z people we're gonna start seeing like princesses that are like period and you know it's <laughs> oh the outfit God. for me dog shit like yeah. that can you imagine super woke princess yeah I i'm not looking forward to the like the cringe wave of media like because mm. like so i think so like some movies like update their humor and like the culture well and then some just go how do you do kids fucking steve buscemi <laughs> How do you do, fellow kids? Um, kind of to answer your question and the way I think about it is like Disney has a shitload of pressure because they just release fucking gold, right? And they still they slip, but they still release bangers, right? Like Frozen was a fucking was a banger. Um, people like the uh, Moana a lot, you know, Princess and the Frog. People like that one. There's. Even though they're going, and I think they do the remakes because it's easy money. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, just get some big name actors. Just do it again. But uh, Netflix adaptation live action style, bro. I think it's just easy money. But at the same time, I think they still release bangers. So Yeah. And going back to, to Bob Iger, like he was conservative in, in, in a lot of ways, but he also wasn't because, I mean, he was the one who bought uh, Marvel. The MCU alone, like just. All right. Well, we got all these movies now. That's yeah, a big cock move. I agree. Yeah. Uh, Lucasfilm. And then he bought Pixar. Pixar is just always, they just, all they do is release bangers. They're like, y'all want some bangers? Wait, when did he buy Pixar? Uh, 2006 for $7.4 billion. So wait, how did it work before? They were, they were a publisher. They would, okay, we'll publish your movie for you. But they were still working independently of Disney. Okay. And then the question, which isn't necessarily related, um, how big is your no just kidding um i always get confused with pixar and disney animation do they have any overlap in personnel like uh, they might because it's like frozen isn't pixar it's disney animation lamau mm -mm. right uh yes um i i would have to do more research into that to see if i'm pretty sure they've had some people now that they're a part of disney like, yeah you got seven, like you, you said the words like seven billion dollars for pixar there and that's even more than star wars which is for Lucasfilm. That's not nuts. even just Star Wars. That's Lucasfilm. Lu so now they own the rights to Indiana Jones. Uh, uh, like those really old video games that were point and click adventures by Lucasfilm. LucasArts. It's crazy. That's crazy. But they, you said it, man. And it's like you just, they're just throwing around these insane portions of cash. And it makes you really realize how powerful Disney is. You know, it's not just... And how broke I am. In the States, you know, it's just... It's worldwide. Bro. Oh, yeah. Disney is everywhere. Disney has parks in... Uh, Concentration camps. camps. For all those little... Just Mickeys. Uh, uh, yeah. The Disney Studios are actually... Uh, fe they're going to be uh, FEMA camps. Uh, you see, they got a deal. Uh, I don't know. Somebody on the internet's probably already fleshed that theory out by now. 100%. Yeah, probably. I wouldn't doubt 100%. it. 
Anyways, let's get on to Rogue One. Uh, George, I think we what we what piqued your interest on this was how you know Francisco, Christian, and I all kind of said it's very Saving Private Ryan ish of the Star Wars mm-hmm. cinema universe. And uh, real, so real quick, I, I know you have questions, but I have a question for you. What compare? I mean, you've only seen the Mandalorian, which is already I think pretty violent, which is awesome for the Star Wars universe. But how did you feel seeing Rogue One in comparison to like the Mandalorian? I'm starting to see the story unfold, which is what I really wanted from this. I really wanted to start to get the whole scope as to, um, you know, just how big the, the Star Wars galaxy is and, and how deep the history is. And I think that's the coolest part for me is cause like I'm a history buff kind of guy. I love things that are, uh, nonfiction and to see that, you know, although this is all fictional, there's such a a deep story behind it, which actually is like where I think the world could head head to. And I always used to hear people say, you know, Star Wars is what the world is going to be like in, you know, I wish 100, 200 years, which I mean, I don't think it'll be that soon. But I think eventually you're going to reach a point where um, if if intergalactical travel is ever a real thing you know, you're going to start to see these kind of stories unveil. And I, it's part of a, one of the questions that I have, you know, it's just like, it's such a fighting culture. And I'm going to save that question for the end. Yeah. But I think that's, that's the thing that I'm most bought into right now is this, uh, this like deep hatred, you know, like when I think of intergalactical travel and the practical sense of like what we would do as human beings, like, I don't see it as something that is like a, you need to conquer space. It's more of like a, Oh, we come together and we are able just to create like a, a peaceful galaxy, which right. this is not, which I'm getting, which, you know, uh, is par for the course with the timeline that you're currently in, in the universe. Mm-hmm. So you'll see different aspects. Mm-hmm. throughout. But um, before we get to the questions, I know Christian had some points he wanted to talk about uh, with this film. Yeah, I definitely do. Um, this is my second time watching the movie in Austin. Yours as well, right? Correct. Really good movie. Um, I'm going to just go over the shit I liked about it. That's pretty much it. Like, Do it. And I have some notes because I'm efficient. Just jizz all over us with those notes. Uh, <laughs> We're getting Chris ready. Just let me yeah. spit on it a little. <laughs> and here it is. Um, so first, uh, K2SO is the droid. He's funny as fuck. And I like in Star Wars movies when they make a droid that has like a good personality. Yeah, like uh Princess I mean um C three PO. He doesn't have a lot of lines, but no. he's like he he's like analytical yet kind of like almost uh what's the word? Um whimsical. Kind of being negative. K two SO. He's like he's like very condescending. Passive aggressive. Yeah, yes. passive aggressive, probably. Yeah, um, I love the line uh, when he, Jin Erso's escaping the ship, and she walks out, and he like, you said the cane, he cane choke slams her. Whoosh! He says, "You are being saved. Do not resist." Or uh, yeah, I think he says like, "Congrats, you are being rescued. Do not resist." <laughs> and I, I just that re- that made me remember when the movie came out. There were so many memes of that because you know all the like. Since 2016, when it came out, all this political strife bullshit that's been going on, it's like, oh, ha ha, you know, both sides claiming to be peaceful when, like, they're like violent shitheads, Mm -hmm. you know, (laughs) you are being rescued, or or it's like, (laughs) America uh, going to the village with oil in the Middle East, but you are being rescued, do not resist, (laughs) we're here to help. And also when he said, uh, um, the the fucking Mick Mick Nuka goes off from the Death Star in in, uh, the, the desert planet which is like basically Afghanistan. Um, he says, <laughs> no, 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 dude, bro, I'm gonna get into some shit. That's like not even a joke. But he's like, oh, the, um, there's a problem over the horizon. There is no horizon. <laughs> As like the, the mushroom cloud expands and the fucking, the, the, the dust the planet is melting within itself. So K2SO was great. He was a real one. He sacrificed himself, like total baller. I, I liked his eyes, how they, that you could kind of see like the little panels in the eyes like flick back left and right. Right. That's a really, really good design in both 
machines and monsters. I think of something like uh, the Hellboy movies. Yeah. Um, where like they design the monsters. The the fish guy has these respirators. So you could kind of see when like his breath his uh breath gets uneasy. It's those little details that like have these otherworldly creatures emotes to you, and it's badass. Um, two, the blind guy was badass. I like that what they did is they expanded on the concept of the force in a way that's not just like, oh, you have the force, you're just a Jedi or nothing. It was almost like a like a religious I mean, the force has always been like a religious thing, but it was more of like, like, uh, I pray to God, God's going to help me. Yes. A hundred percent. That helped me too. When I was like, it's, it's connotating human world to that, not or that fictional the reality, <laughs> right? Like it, it really helps, uh, me understand how much people love the force. Well, I mean, like, Outside of him, like you just hear people say, like, may the force be with you. Mm-hmm. But like only really like Jedi's are really like, oh yes, the force. I get but yeah, it's just weird to me. You know what I mean? It's like they're praying to this being. Yeah, is- and because that's what the force is. The force is like a sentient it's like a life form almost. Mm-hmm. It's like the collective of everything in a way. Yeah, um, there's good force, there's bad force, there's like Air Force. Yeah, Air Force Space got, Force. got them Air Force 13s on my feet, bro. <laughs> In Star Wars 2000, uh, hey, fucking 40. Hey, Darth Vader, post up, bro. Um, but I, I, I liked the blind guy. And um, because, like, it, it really makes you think of the Force as kind of the culture of, like, this whole universe rather than just, like, the Jedi thing. And we see him manifesting a Force that isn't just, like, haha, I'm a Jedi. And uh, it was super cool when he was he pulled out the bolt and he fucking nailed that oh that space fighter like just he just because he's blind he just yeah right there and he like hits it like dead on and then he does it again when they're fighting on the beach and I was like wouldn't it be great if he just like ah! and just like whiffed it and just shot like off into the air <laughs> it's almost like you remember uh, in Gerardo yeah Gerardo with, yes. the, with the bow and arrow because <laughs> oh, you were an MP I think we told you the story but I mean for everybody yeah. listening there's this kid. So that's how George and I really bonded was eighth grade health and PE. And there was this kid, Gerardo, and like, I don't know, I think he works at like a, a T-Mobile now. But, but He could also help you with archery. Yeah, it, I don't know about that. So in health, we were doing archery and like we would all line up in these lines on the field and there's a target at the end of the field. And the teacher was very specific. He's like, if you shoot this at anybody, you're instantly out. And he would like, yo hole and then just do some dumb shit but he went he went he went hole and then just like arrow rouletted it up into the air and we're on the it was like i think i was going to say it was like philip you dennis myself and gerardo in one line and we're on the far right and he aims to the left and just goes up and i'm surprised he didn't hit anybody but it, like two seconds later he's just like all right come on dean's office middle schoolers are more dangerous <laughs> With criminals. bows and arrow than a blind man in Star Wars. But I was imagining that though. I was imagining oh, he's just like the forces would be shoots his friend in the back. Serious, that would have been hilarious. <laughs> or he just completely misses. He just shoots like that way, and they're they're like right in front of him. <laughs> That's what happens. Uh, there's if, a lot of interference in this area. <laughs> if you don't go to church every Sunday in Star Wars and you pray to the force, that's what happens. Like if you're like a fake force. Fake forcer, fake Christian. Bad things happen when you just trust the force too much. I thought maybe it's like a cell signal, like, oh, I only have two bars. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> you hit the wrong people, you know? Like Oh my god. So, you go to use your lightsaber, it just shoots you in the dick. You're like, ow oh fuck. All right. What else? Um I like the Easter eggs. Um, the one that I remembered was the the pig face guy who gets his arm cut off in the trilogy. The guy, yeah, uh, number four. My buddy, uh, he, he, you know, he doesn't oh, like you. He doesn't like you. I don't like you either. Um, there was like a really obscure character thrown in there, and when you watch Trilogy, you'll find out about him. Yeah, Got it. in the next I, movie, you guys see- definitely like, like. Oh my gosh! Like, whenever we're watching Star Wars, there's these moments that Chris and Austin have that I just like. It's like being the third wheel on a date, and it's you're like, just like, <laughs> it's yeah, like, no, I get what you're saying, bro. It's like seeing a <laughs> joke on Facebook in Spanish. You're like, I want to ja ja too. <laughs> <laughs> but uh hey i'm just glad they're having a good time okay? th- that's why you act because I, I originally i was like you guys want to do mulan this episode and george goes 
I tried to watch Rogue One and I, I mad lost. So uh, can you guys just come watch a movie? And that's why he just wants to hear us fucking geek out for an hour. I do. I low key like love it. But I, I, what, what else? Chris? What else do you like? Brother? Okay. <laughs> two more things. And then I have like a fucking like essay, like a tangent. Uh-huh. I like it. Vader was totally yeah. fucking badass. That's that's my thing was I was going to say Vader at the end with his dramatic ass. Let me turn off my fucking life support. It's like in these movies, like the point of these movies is to get away from the Jedi shit, but like it's ever present. So you like when once you just like when Luke appeared in Mandalorian, fuck it, we're spoiling the Mandalorian in a non Mandalorian episode. I don't give a fuck. Watch it. Um, it, it's still badass. You know, he fucking lights the lightsaber and he fucking dude, he fucking choke slams the guy into the ceiling. Then as he walks, uh, walks like through the, the hallway, he casually whoosh, and cuts him against the ceiling. She was badass. Okay. The whole thing. And I like that he was like, he actually had lines. He was characterized when he was talking to uh white Cape and McGee earlier, whatever his name was. Mm-hmm. Super badass. Uh, Krennic. Yeah. Krennic his name. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I was going to call Orson him white Krennic. Cape. I have IMDB pulled up right here. So yeah, it's Krennic. I just, I remember cause you told me. Right. Um, the CGI in uh, Tarkin and Leia, super impressive, super amazing. Especially when you look at, like Luke, who was just shown to us a month ago, compared to something that was done for a little over four years ago. Like, holy shit. Yeah, I was completely uh, blown away when you said it was CGI. After a minute or so, like, of you, like, okay, this is CGI, this is CGI, you really start looking, and then, it, it, then you can start to see it. But if a you little, didn't know, if you didn't know, but we're gamers, you know, we, we see it. Yes. But it's just very impressive and scary what we can do now. Leia, I thought, looked even more realistic, but like oh, she yeah. only had like one line. Mm-hmm. Oh, and it was really, it was really nice when it came out because it's like right when when Carrie Fisher died. That was like right. the the David Bowie Prince Carrie Fisher fucking wave, right? That little right. Oh, pe- people are people are dying. Mm-hmm. Um, and then her mom died like a week after she died from. She had. She I didn't died. know her mom yeah, was her, still alive at that point. Yeah, her mom died from like literally like from a broken heart. I think she had a heart attack and died. Oof. Damn. <laughs> Cue Roblox kid dying. Um, okay, that was... Okay, now, now time for my friggin' essay, okay? So, Star Wars has... <laughs> I'm just pausing right there. Oh, no, he's bringing up uh, foreign politics. Uh, <laughs> okay, so Star Wars has always... Is... I for, You forget, like, what it means, the fact that it's called Star Wars, because, like, you get it twisted with all the Jedi shit. But it's always been about like the imagery invoked from like World War II. The, the stormtroopers, they're not, they're space Nazis. Like we've been over this like uh, fucking 80 times. And as you watch the films, you'll, you're going to get into them more and see that. This movie is like a military, like FMJ saving private Ryan style movie. Right. So like you kind of see that in a very conventional, like military, like entertainment type way. Um, and it's really awesome. So. Um, for one, like Jen Erso, you know, her and all these other rebels, they're just people that like they want to get back. They're they're only fighting this war so they could survive and get back to their families, right? Jen Erso is like fighting for her father, for example. You know, and like it makes me think of like the the rhetoric of World War II where it's like America wasn't involved, but like it's like, you know, when there's like these evil imperialist fuckers on the other side of the world. If you're somebody who can fight, you're obligated to, right? Right. And that was like her denial to the call to the adventure. And then she said, oh, shit, I have to fight. I have to be the one for these fucking people. And she was baller fucking 360 no scope the fucking station. And, you know, badass. So it really paints that point. It's like, yeah, we had to liberate the Holocaust. We had to, you know, we had to do all that shit. A, uh, B, when the, fir- when the Death Star was first used on that fucking Afghanistan planet. I don't even remember what it was called. And I think that wasn't even full power either. Oh yeah. They used like a fucking, that was like a, like a fat man bomb. Right. Mm -hmm. But notice they used a mushroom cloud. Okay. Super deliberate. It's like, Oh, you know, weapons of mass destruction, definitely evoking the imagery of Nagasaki and Hiroshima. No, you know, no, no doubt about that. Um, you know, and it goes into the message like, ah, weapons of mass destruction, should never have been created. You know, they're like inhuman, da da da. Um, and then notice right after they fire it, right? They obliterate the fucking the whole the whole planet. The, it shows the room with all the empire fuckers, and they're just looking and like, 
silence. They don't know what to think. They don't know if to be amazed or afraid. And it's just like when the bombs were dropped on Japan and everybody just kind of watched in silence, you know, it's definitely, they're, they're definitely playing with that same historical thing, which is always awesome. Cause while it's fiction, you know, it's still, it's still like a real mm-hmm. kind of story. They're kind of trying mm-hmm. to paint to us. Um, okay. The middle East planet. Okay, this whole thing, World War II, it's about like the military industrial complex that started from World War II, right? You know, there was the, the arms race to create the nuke and then war became an industry, da da da. Um on the Middle East planet, they're literally you they're literally extracting fuel from the fucking planet, which was the crystals. Come on, you know. Mm-hmm. Let's go to the Middle East and get our fucking oil. Yep. Empire imperialism. Right. They're they're definitely playing with those parts very uh intentionally. Um, the village ambush, dude, totally like Middle Eastern, like war shit, like, oh, there's like the insurgents and, you know, they take, take down the military convoy. Definitely doing that on purpose. Um, and then right when they got to Scarif, the island planet, you fucking said, oh, it's like Iwo Jima. They did, they totally did that on purpose. Yes. Cause they, they're playing with the same, you know, type of story there. Um, you know, with the war in the Pacific theater. Um, you know, fighting the Japanese, it even has that kind of archipelago thing going on. Like when we fought the Japanese, we were island hopping from island to island. Um, and, and you know, the, then and, and it, the whole island was beautiful, it looked like a fucking resort, but that's kind of a sidebar. Um, you know, they play with the points like uh, imperialism is bad, um, having a military industrial complex, it's bad. I like how we see these real world issues kind of leak into things, and that's the end of the essay. It's well, well done. Very nice. I give that uh you got to see. You still need to make up three assignments to pass the class. Ah oh, shit. All right. I'm time to play dress. Dude, if you ever have a history teacher and he loves Star Wars and you write <laughs> and there's like an essay about World War 2, you just be like, "All right, Rogue One." Uh, literally, 100%. You'll yeah, pass, dude. Well, and to to preface that, George Lucas literally said, "Yeah, I modeled the empire after the Nazis." Hmm. when he made the first star wars films yeah he was like yeah literally these are supposed to be nazis honestly it, it, it you you can't i think this goes back to when we're talking about like disney recreating stuff you know there's certain things in in life and our emotions and our feelings that you know you don't need to think about reinventing the wheel when it comes to it you know it's happened already you know what i mean and you just present it in different fashions and in methods that will intrigue the youth and intrigue everyone's like mind on like everyone who loves space so no i think i think you nailed it man so uh i know you have some questions because uh while i'm looking at this imdb page mm-hmm. there's some uh, they call it goofs Ooh. so some like uh some like issues they found in the movie okay so i figured i'd say that for the towards for the, the end for the, okay yeah so i'll i'll hop in um thought immediately right off the jump uh it's nuts that the rebels were taking uh Jin to go kill her dad it was like at, at first well they weren't one general was saying go kill the dad. everybody else was like we just need to, to get information from him yeah but that one dude was like we need to kill him because i'm a white man and i have a napoleon complex i don't know probably but at the same time too like i could see where that guy's coming from it's like hey guys did you not just see what just happened over yeah, here like, like it's very him, please it's very clear like yeah and then also in hindsight you know if Jin would have kept that data shard the hologram that's a data shard what is this cyberpunk uh it looked like a basically looked disc. like a big ass yeah big ass floppy disk well i'm talking about the little thing she had where, where it had her dad's hologram and it was like oh yeah Jin, yeah i put you in tampico mm-hmm what do we call the juice <laughs> but yeah like if she would have kept that then they probably would have been like all right don't kill him but then they didn't have it and even like you know you know uh, the the we oui, we oui, dude the french dude uh was like Ooh. yeah <laughs> we you know you don't have it well you don't have to explain that to me you gotta explain that to them yep 100 percent. i i so i'll i'll move on to my next point here uh this kind of ties into that whole tangent that you went on chris i'm surprised you didn't touch on it there's a point in time where the imperial side is trying to like interrogate this one guy and like extract the data from him because he was helping out the rebels i believe at the time the the pilot is who i'm talking about well the imperials weren't doing that uh saw was yes 
which is that's just like a gorilla. Yes. Yes. Faction. Okay. I, there we go. I had it flipped. Um, so they used like this octopus thought sucker thing, which I first immediately thought, um, cause Austin was like, Oh George, this is going to get really like intense here and grab like, you know, like they're going to really mess with this dude. So, uh, at first I was like tentacle porn, but then I was like, George, it's get Disney your mind movie. out, get your mind out of the gutter. Right. And the way that this octopus like puts his tentacles on this guy's head and everything, it made me think of two things. It made me think of, um, electroshock therapy. Right. Um, which I've seen in like, you know, American horror story and stuff like that. But then I thought even deeper once we started getting into the World War II stuff about like MK Ultra and how they would give people Ooh, yeah. LSD, you know, to like, you know, lower their lower their inhibitions and like just spill the beans on everything that's going Some, on. Like, Cold War Truth Serum tears shit. Right. Yeah. So and I was just like, there was definitely some tabs of LSD on that octopus's like <laughs> tentacles and like you just shocked it Operation into his brain midnight climax because like and it's funny even after the dude gets like his freaking brain sucked by this octopus like you can still see him like dazed from it and i'm like oh he's coming down from an acid trip right now 100 percent. yeah george goes that that octopus had four tablets of acid on him literally probably even more probably even more <laughs> um but that was all done by that saw guerrero 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 dude how prevalent is he in the earlier like one two three never you never don't see him until that movie got you uh he's in like i think in the clone war series and then he's also in the fallen order video game mm, okay yeah a lot of these characters a, you never see again he was a badass character which i thoroughly uh enjoyed his presence he gave me like a call of duty-esque feel right yeah you know he's just doing Mason. this because everyone's wronged him and he's trying to right all the wrongs right. in his life excellent um you you mentioned it a lot throughout the film that the, a lot of the ways that some of these stormtroopers were dying were very unconventional compared to what George Lucas did in the earlier films. Like one thing I've noted was Jin hit a no look nut shot on a on a stormtrooper, oh, yeah. like a literally like no look behind her back, just fired a n- perfect nut shot, and I was like, that's funny because clearly he got hit in the nuts. And then you said, like, oh, you know, they're getting headshotted throughout the rest of the yeah, film. There's a scene where they just walk up and blast them in the head, and you see it. it's like a Schindler's List scene. Mm-hmm. And, like, you don't see that in the other Star Wars movies. I mean, and, like, and that's not to say they don't have their graphic moments, but, like, I feel that's the one thing Episode Seven did well was, like, humanize Stormtroopers, you know, with Finn. Like, you see, like, the shit that they deal with. It's like, holy fuck, what am I doing? Mm-hmm. So it's, it's like that. Um, but yeah, like, I feel that Rogue One is the most graphic besides maybe the Mandalorian. Cause like Mandalorian, like gives like I said last week, gives a dude like the the Vietnam treatment with napalm, mm-hmm. and then he snaps a dude's neck. But like you see, like somebody walk up and just headshot a stormtrooper. Normally yeah, they would just get shot like in the torso and just fall over, and that'd be it. Yeah, no, but I I think it adds a sense of uh of depth and realism. Yes, to it. yes, uh, which I loved. M- next question I got right. Was the Death Star like there beforehand before Rogue One started or was it like because I know you mentioned at the beginning that that first scene of Jin running away and the dad what was what's the dad's name? Yeah, it starts with a G. Oh, uh, let me go back. Mr. Urso. I, I don't I don't Mr. Urso. His, it's his like name Gail, is Gatan? Galen. 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 Yes. Um. So. I know you'd mentioned that was a flashback. Is that a flashback from like one, two, and three? No, that's like a flashback from like 15 years before that. Okay. Um, I forgot how many, I think it's like 18 years in between episode three and episode four. Because like, this is going to spoil it for you, but like Luke is born in episode three. Gotcha. And then in episode four, you see him, he's like a teenager. Mm-hmm. Okay. So was the, my question, the Death Star. That's the first appearance you see in chronological order. The first appearance you ever see of it is in four, four, but in four, it's fully operational and they like completely nuke a planet. That's why we're like, holy shit, the fucking Death Star. Yeah. Yep. You don't see it in three because uh, it's just not there. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say anymore because when you yeah, see yeah. one, two and three, you understand, oh, OK, this is how much shit went down before they even got to the Empire. Mm-hmm. So that that answers that. I, I felt that um, the scientists that were like creating all this there there was a scene in which they were fighting for credit 
which I found absolutely hilarious. Oh, it was it was the it was Tarkin and uh, White Cape. Yeah, I, I literally just had his name. Uh, with a K, Krennic. Yes, because Grand Moff Tarkin was kind of just like, yeah, that's cool. I'm taking control. He goes, no, this is my creation. This is what I'm doing. I'm in charge. I think they're almost the same rank. I want to say they're the same rank, so they can like have that rivalry. Mm -hmm. And then he, yeah. Because I was like, are they fighting for who's more evil? Are they fighting for who's more badass? Or are they fighting based on who's got the bigger dick? Yeah, it's like, the, it's the last one. It's totally a dick waving contest. Like I, I, I did this, and Grand Moff Tarkin's like, bitch, I'm back from the dead. <laughs> I'm fucking CGI and I'm still winning this argument. <laughs> um, I love the crispy white capes. Uh, white capes look super cool. Imagine you, the dry cleaning on those. Though. I was going to mention that there's a couple of things in Star Wars that I don't see too often. And dry cleaners is one. And everyone's always got crispy outfits. Well, of them. course they do, because Disney wants them to. Yeah. Well, you know, good for Disney. Good on them. Good on them, but you said there was some dirty stormtroopers. Yeah, because you were like, I thought oh, were just fucking go, yeah. yellow. Yeah, they're the scout troopers, so it's supposed to be like a ghillie suit kind of thing. It's mm. supposed to be like camouflage. Franny's going to yell at me. I already know he's going to yell at me. Uh, like, I'm already anticipating these messages coming in and be like, you dumb bitch. That's not what happened. The helmet stays on during sex. But anyways, as I said, so uh, th those are scout troopers. Usually they're more camouflaged, mm. you know, to blend in. Or they're like, they're like in episode uh, six, they're like, bright white or like in the mando the one that punches baby yoda those mm -hmm. are scout troopers got it got so it. since they're in iwo jima they're probably blended in the blend in with the sand yeah they got that like sand color because they're on the mick island yeah so leading into like how crazy these freaking nukes were and like i was just thinking about Jin, right you know like her whole life i, I think that's just the funny thing about movies and then me just thinking too practically and about timelines and everything it just seems like she got pulled out of jail and then she went to go on the mission to like see her father die at the same time right before seeing her father die she almost died from a fucking nuke and i was like just a typical tuesday for jen just and this is she dies on wednesday she dies on wednesday bro her whole life just in a prison cell and gets taken out and then all this happens in the span of you know freaking two days it seems like yeah um but that 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 was what I thought was kind of funny. Um, where do uh, the French people come from? What planet are they from? Because Frenchy was kind of cool. The surrender planet. <laughs> oh, I don't. Know. I don't know. Just like uh, all Viva the British, Stones. all the British people too. It's supposed to be just be like forced diversity. I didn't think Joe Rogan talked <laughs> forced about forced diversity. No, that's what he Joe Rogan called it. Really? Yeah, he called it like forced diversity because they're just like, look, we're gonna do this because we can. I think that like. I don't think European, like, in this brave new world, I don't think any type of European counts as diversity anymore. No. It's like, if you're a type of white, that's not diverse. <laughs> so. I thought. I didn't mind it. I, was, you know, I'm not annoyed by British accents or anything like that. I thought there was, a, a like, a, a black guy that was supposed to be, like, one of the main characters. Or am I thinking of a different yeah, no, film? No, that's, that's Finn. That's from 789. I swear I saw him, like, in the commercials or previews for Rogue One a couple of years ago when it was coming out. Or is no. he in the movie Solo? No, that's uh, that's uh, what's his face? That's uh, Lando. Yeah, yeah, Lando. But that's uh, the rapper. Hmm. Ray J. No, uh, uh, Kelly. Till two thousand and five. Childish Gambino. Yeah, it's him. That's that's. Oh, what the hell's his that, name? That's probably oh, Donald Glover. Yeah, Donald. Oh Glover. yeah, I forgot that he was in yeah, that. Yeah, he was Lando. Yeah. But no, um, the what you were probably thinking of episode nine because that's the most recent one that came out. Yeah. And th yeah, that's Finn. That's uh yeah, uh, yeah, so yeah. I forgot his first name, but Boyega is his last name. Yeah. John he, Boyega. Yeah, he's British, but he puts on an American accent for the movie. Oh, which awesome. Think, which I think is interesting. That would just throw everything off. Yeah. Also, right? he's, he's like, like he's also kind of like with that forced diversity like backfired because they're like, look, we have a main black character, and then they just kind of go, nah, this white girl is gonna be the main character. Ha <laughs> ha, it's like <laughs> well, it's the diversity wars. Uh black and then oh you're getting toppled here's a woman you know what i mean <laughs> which you know so good characters why is it called the death star and not like the death sphere or the death orb because or the death a, circle because it's cool dude it's badass i don't know i mean it's probably the size of a star oh, i could get, I, I get that like now the sun i didn't is make a star. that connotation 
but I was just like, this motherfucker, this shit ain't shaped like a star. Why isn't it called the Death Orangutan? I think the Death Orb is kind of sick. Death Orb. I have a theory that I just thought of, so it's very well uh, researched. Uh-oh. Everybody Lovely. get ready for an MLM. <laughs> Multi-level marketing. <laughs> All right, guys. So you get in on the bottom level. Um, so now imagine you're on one of these planets that, that gets fucking destroyed. If you look up in the sky and you looked, you saw the light coming, the laser beam directly going towards the planet, it'd probably look like a star, wouldn't it? Right? Yeah, probably. Because before the laser shoots, they all kind of connect. It's like five right. lasers that connect. Right. And that yeah, makes they, like a, a cone. They fucking yeah, converge. Yeah. Which, okay. I can see that. I, I was just wondering if you guys had that same thought or you're just like. I always just figure like, oh, it sounds badass. Bro. Yeah, that's what like, I like. Like mm-hmm. the Raider Stadium, which I'm still waiting for them to keep. The Raider Stadium is called the Roomba. It's that's... called the Roomba to us <laughs> who know what it's called. But nice. the, the, the coach keeps calling it the Death Star and Disney's like, go ahead. Keep doing that. Keep doing that. You going? You want to be the the Las Vegas broke? <laughs> Go ahead and keep oh saying it. Oh my god! So there's some things that I just feel like I don't see during uh and all the 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 Star Wars that I've watched so far. First thing is like drugs. There's no drug presence or anything that I've seen at, up to this point. The only thing is like alcohol and because, a bar scene. Because like Brandy said last weekend, George Lucas originally made these for kids. Mm-hmm. There is like a hint at cigarettes in episode two. Obi Wan is like in a bar and he goes, "You want some death sticks?" And he goes, "I I don't want any death sticks." And he goes, "I don't. You don't want any death sticks." He goes, "You want to go home and rethink your life?" He goes, "I want to go home and rethink my life." <laughs> like he uses like the force powers on him and makes him like not want to do death sticks, which are just cigarettes. Dare, okay, what Dare did to us, literally, but failed. He failed. Yeah, but Obi Wan did it. Obi Wan is the Dare program. So drugs was one. Coffee is another one. I just, I don't know. They I didn't see a single fucking Starbucks product place. So this I, is, <laughs> how is this they a don't film? need coffee, dude. They're living on fucking fear of dying at any minute. That is true. That is true. It just seems like some of those empire sons of bitches, like in their comfort, like I just want like him to be drinking like some espresso as he sees the nuke just land on the planet and melt everything away. He it walks wasn't away. His break time yet. <sighs> his break was after he nuked. Then he was like, all right, I, I got. It's I like, got 30 for lunch. <laughs> yeah, I got 30 for lunch. I'll be back in 30, guys. You guys take care. Uh, just do some paperwork. Uh, but uh, I don't want to interrupt you if you have any more questions, but I remember you were asking that one question about, you know, being so fighty. Mm-hmm. Um, and, like, the answer to that is in previous movies, it's still fighty, but it's not, like, as fighty. Okay. It's not war. It, it is it's war. It's more Jedi shit. It's war, but it's war on the scale that we have war now. We're just kind of like, ah, we're invading that place over there. And it's just two sets of people fighting. Got you. Like battle. Yeah. Uh, Where you're seeing now is kind of like, hey, it's almost like a World War II kind of thing. We all have to get fucking involved. Uh, The first three movies, it's kind of very much like, oh, the rich people are like, there's a war. Hmm, I don't know violence. And then they get like leveled and they're like, doomsday is near. (laughs) I want to kill somebody. Yeah, that, that, so that was my question. Are there pacifists in Star Wars? Oh, yeah, absolutely. There's pacifists. Uh, is it just like a specific character type? Or I'm is trying it to like remember a, if there's a specific character. I feel like there's there's a character that's like, I'm not getting involved. Well, I feel like the people Jedi are complacent are like because either either they just, you know, either like they're like, yeah, I'll suck the Empire's cock. You know, I'll come out. They're probably going to win, so I'll get a good life. Well, yeah, it, like a lot of the people, like John Boyega style, they kind of just, it's kind of like now, like I joined the military so I could get health care. And, and that, yeah, that too, like, and that's why, like, I like kind of the ethical shit in like Mandalorian where they're like, oh, when the Death Star was blown up, you killed a billion hardworking men. It's like, yeah, war sucks, bro. Shouldn't play dumb games, get fucking genocide prizes, buddy. Um, <laughs> And then there's also people who feel helpless, uh, like reasonably so. Like they're like, yeah, we're just gonna try to kind of hide under some rocks. Whoever wins wins. Like, I'll like sign up for their fucking Jin's family. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That what that was why I, I felt I felt like from them like they're just like, dude, I don't want to. Can you just? There's got to be someone as smart as me to build this shit for you guys. You guys just please. I'm farming. That uh, original planet that they landed on, if I can live there, oh yeah, look like black sand beaches, like 
perfect little Pacific Northwest overcast. You get in the water, it's acidic. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you know, this kind of goes back to the shit I was saying earlier. The beginning part where fucking Krennic is is down there, you know, and he's like lying about like, oh, nope, back. nobody lives here with me. It's just like fucking Hans, uh, what is it, Hans Lando in fucking Inglorious Bastards. Got the fucking Polish, like, Shire-looking fucking countryside. And, uh, no, there's no Jews living here. They're underneath the floorboard. <laughs> like, it was it was totally that. And, like, I, you know, like, I'm a shit poster, so I ought to... Hitler is in everything in some fucking meme way. But I think maybe it was more intentional than we thought. He was definitely Jew hunting, okay? Right. Yeah. Not to be offensive. He has to be offensive. Fuck you. But to kind of lay some groundwork uh, about like pacifism, the Jedi are kind of very pacifistic. They they don't go. They're not like how Luke is, where he's like, "I'm going to show up on this ship and just fucking annihilate everybody here." The Jedi are more like almost like the UN. Like if shit gets real, they'll fuck you up. But like otherwise, they're just like we have meditation to do. Hmm. Mm. You know, we have a council yes. that we talk about. I get on. that from them. I get that. Like, it's like, and you haven't the, even really seen they're to the, the point, prequel Jedi. Like, they're so badass that it's like, all right, listen, I can just do everything. I, I can be the best. Like, I'm the god so, like, type thing. So, you've seen Darth Vader and you've seen Ahsoka and you've seen uh, Luke. Luke. All like Anakin. So, Anakin, aka Darth Vader. Mm hmm. The re- one of the reasons why Darth Vader is so good is one because he's the chosen one. He's such a high midichlorian count. And he's just he's just basically gifted, but he has such good training too. Because in the Luke had, to, I mean, like Franny got mad at me. Yeah, he got training from Yoda, but he got like the Rocky treatment. Other yeah. dudes were like training at like the UFC facility with like cryo tanks. And yeah. Stuff. yeah, is that what that was? Like he was just like, oh, that's that's because he's he's a burn victim. You that's know? why he looked like a fucking that's chewed up piece has, of gum. That's why he has the suit. Shit yeah. didn't go well on the on the lava planet. Um, on Mustafar, yeah, you'll uh, see that in episode yes, three. Yes, yes. That Don't, explains everything. Yeah. Why Darth Vader is Darth Vader? Okay. And then there's some backstory that I didn't know until uh, one of my coworkers, who's a huge Star Wars fan. Uh, Brandy's a huge Star Wars fan in the fact of like the movies and you know the props and everything. But my this coworker that I have, he's huge on like the books and mm. the comic mm. books and like. I mean, he still plays the video game that's 17 years old. Oof. That still Which has is that? Uh, Star Wars Galaxies. Okay. And there's a mod now called Legends where it's basically just the old servers reopened. But oh, there's wow. there's like, a, I think I want to say a couple thousand people that still play it. Wow. So, but he, he told me, um, I, like, I want to say this, but I don't want to say it to you because I want you do to it, watch bro, it. Do it, bro. No, do no, it. So. It's going to go one ear out the other. The Emperor, because you were asking about the Emperor. Mm-hmm. Because I think you were asking if the dude in the white was the emperor, and I was like, no, that's not the emperor. Yeah, but he seemed important. Yeah, he was like a high-ranking like military General. official. Yeah. Um, obviously, you don't see him ever again because he fucking murked. Mm-hmm. But uh, like Darth Vader, so he Anakin and Obi Wan fight. It ends really badly, and since Anakin can't fulfill what the emperor wants him to do, he punishes him with that suit. Like that suit causes him pain. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. And uh hmm. so like he's a burn victim because he literally got melted by lava. I don't know how he didn't die. Like like one of us that would kill us. Sci-fi. So. Sci-fi, yeah. But he he basically like the emperor punishes him for not completing the the task. Mm-hmm. So he has to live with that for the rest of his life, which it makes him like he's so like swift and powerful because it takes a lot of energy. So he's like, I he's just an extremely kill. punished fucking character. Like he's carrying the weight of so much fucking pain. Yeah, from just and just from episodes one and three, just the amount of pain that, that dude goes through. As Darth Vader is just like, all right, well, this is my life now. All I know is fucking pain. Mm-hmm. So, but uh, yeah. So the Jedi are very uh, peaceful, Passive. pa- pacifistic, but like they'll fuck you up. Like they'll send out like two Jedi and they'll clear out like an entire base and be like, all right, well. Break yeah, time. figures, bro. Figures. Yeah, no, I got thirty for lunch. So you got any more? Uh, any more questions? This is the last one that I guys uh, that I have. It's kind of comical to me. So, um, I've I've enjoyed getting to understand a little bit of like the hyperspeed and like going into hyperspeed. Um, and what I thought right is like hyperspeed kind of Lightspeed? looks 
Light light, is it light speed or hyperspeed? It's light, light Jump speed. to hyperspace. Hyperspace. I want to say we all know what I'm talking I think, about. I want, to, I want to say there's two speeds because I remember from uh, remember the frog episode of the Mandalorian, the frog lady, where she's like, due to the nature of these eggs, you can jump to hyperspace. You can only go at light speed. Yeah, light speed. Physics mm. of Millennium Falcons jumped. Oh, okay. It, yeah, I guess it's light speed hyperspace. Hyperspace is when you when they go the tunnel, whoosh. the tunnel. Yeah, yeah you see the because well, this yes. is also saying that's also light speed too. Hmm. Three by ten. Uh, Three times ten to the eighth meters per second mm. is the speed that they're fucking going. My God, Elon Musk will figure that shit out. So uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson already has it. What I was thinking, right, is like, and I don't don't laugh, but I was like, uh, is this because obviously, like, there's a creator of the galaxy, right? And obviously, like, we Jesus. just we'll call it God for this purpose, right? <laughs> I was thinking is like when people go into hyperspeed, are is it like going into like God's intestines and then like when they return out of hyperspace, like it's like God just like pooping them out? Cause the the tunnel looks like my intestines like after Taco Bell. Like it just it's just Pulling super fast up. and it's just shooting through and it's just spinning up and then it just like and then just poops you out so, wherever you want to go. I know for a fact that neil degrasse Tyson, i don't remember what he said but i know he's talked about it and there's many shows you can watch where they talk about that but it's it's like them going through like it's just them traveling so fast mm -hmm. that just like it's just like boop. but like think about like a little deeper yeah the people like the force where does the force come from right if we end up finding aliens we'd still be like all right who made those aliens all right that's that overarching god so is hyperspace that God's intestine and you just like get pooped out wherever you want to go. Um, that's funny as fuck, George. Um, <laughs> I think it's funny to take an absurd notion and then look at it analytically because it's autistic. Yes. Don't mean a trigger. I yes. just mean slow. I don't Whatever. Intestines. No, I think uh, the only like there's no spirituality in Star Wars, but only in the sense that like there's just like the collective like the collective unconscious and that's what the force is it's just like it's everything it's the life of everything we're all in the fucking stew i mean the force mm -hmm. you know that's what i call it it's the, the fucking stew, stew. Dude. and uh some fuckers you know become jedi masters some fuckers become sith lords and do some inhumane shit and they fall sometimes and i don't know i get it i get it that's about as spiritual as it gets i guess there's so that's Another thing, I don't see churches in Star Wars. I haven't seen any of that. Uh, I mean, there's the Jedi Temple. Okay, but it's because it's it's no real like pantheon to like to like pray to. It's just a. a I think it's accepted, like like universally. Yeah, it's, it's not like well, because you could see it's like if somebody's saying, "Oh yeah, I have the power of God," and it's like, "No, you don't." And then they fucking like turn a dude inside out from his anus. You're like, "All right, you have the power of God." Yeah, I'm not gonna question it anymore. You have it. Mm -hmm. and you know force users legit use the force yes and it's that's why i'm like those are the that's you know god's disciples right and it's not just jedi because just because you have the force doesn't mean you're a jedi you have the sith that blind guy had the force for a little i, I don't know if he had the force or if he was just fucking delusional <laughs> he was he was well he was blind okay he has echolocation see he was so that's, daredevil that's has the, the reason he was screechy <laughs> no i was joking but, uh, uh I think he just kind of receptive to the force. Yeah, I, I feel like he was like, it's like one of those ones like I tapped my chakras in and now I can tell that I'm going to hit a car tomorrow because I'm a Capri Sun. Yes. Yes. Virgo. You're Virgo. Virgo. I don't know. Oh, and the last thing, no uh, anti-gravity. I haven't seen any of that. And I know that that's a Neil deGrasse Tyson probably brings that up at some point in time. Uh, I, just I haven't listen seen to his any podcast. difference. Like, you know what I mean? I haven't seen any difference. I would love for it to be like one planet or like, you know, there's like bouncing around you know like it's like the moon or something or uh everything just and i it's just being hypercritical i just haven't seen it and i was wondering if at any point in time I, this maybe comes but, out but i feel like because there's such an advanced like just just yeah like universe of people they already know all right that one's habitable that one's habitable that one's habitable don't go there it right. rains pennies right well there's also like a in episode one, there's a city in the ocean. 
mm. that they go to. And they literally just put like a harmonica in their mouth and they can breathe underwater. Oh, lovely. You remember, you remember that that's shit? What yeah, it's like, like a little harmonica. It's like a respirator thing. Yeah, and they can just... So I'm assuming they have like just a little thing and just... Oh, I can breathe now. Um, The way I look at that is like... um. You know, they thought of this shit in the 70s, right? <laughs> Which, like, sci-fi was po- actually popping back then. Like, it was... Yeah, Doctor Who. Yeah, like, it was on its way, and there was there was lots of cool shit in that genre. Star Trek. And, um... Basically, like, you know, every continuity has its own, like, assumptions. And I think the assumption was, like, all planets just kind of rhetorically are like Earth in the sense that they are inhabitable in half gravity. It's just that now we have spaceships that can go to them. Mm-hmm. Right. I think now if I was writing like a sci-fi thing, it'd be like, it'd be like we had to create the technology to be able to inhabit all these other places and like, you know, do crazy shit. Fuck with like the polarity of the planet to like make the gravity pressure not too much to where you get fucking pancaked when we step on the at, through the atmosphere. Yeah. That's how I'd be doing it. I but. Just by you saying that right there, it makes me think about all these fucking space movies that I've seen in the last 10 years. And then sometimes it gets overplayed like interstellar or like with the metronome, like forever. every time you hear that little ticker, it's a, it's a year on earth or whatever. You know what I mean? And it's like, it's cool. Like I like to decipher well, that's, that kind that's of real. shit, but then at this, yeah, I know. But then at the same time, I'm like, you've seen it fuck. before. Yeah, I've seen it before, and I kind of want to see, like, a, you know, laser nuclear bomb kill some people. Well, and that's why Star Wars is cool, because it's not just sci-fi, it's also uh, considered fantasy as well. Yeah, like, uh, like uh, going back to my Lord and Savior, Neil deGrasse, him and Bill Nye talked about it, and Bill Nye goes, Star Trek is better than Star Wars, because Star Trek is just based in science. Mm-hmm. Star Wars has faith, because now you have the Force and all these exterior... External exactly. powers. Like, like fantasy is like Lord of the Rings type shit where it's like fantasy. Just think about what you think when you think of the word fantasy versus sci-fi where it's like this is based in based on science. Even if it's not like achievable science now, it's still based on like, oh, hypothetically, science could be like that. Mm-hmm. Star Wars is like scissors, both concepts. Got it. Got so it. <laughs> what, what does this mean? George Bush, uh, George Lucas. Well, him too. But that's another video. George Lucas is a lesbian. Yes. All right. I don't know where that went, but all right. Austin. (laughs) Yes, sir. Rogue One. Where does it rank like for you? Oh, on the pineapple scale? A solid 4.7 pineapples. Mm. I really enjoy it. It's just such a great movie. It has like, I don't know. It has that like, oh, here's a flashback. Remember this? Nostalgia. But it's like the cool part of it. Like, you want to see Darth Vader fuck some people up? You want to see the Death Star fucking Nagasaki and Hiroshima all in one movie? And you're like, yeah, I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. notice how they gave us two fucking Death Star pop off yeah. in the movie. It's like, eh. yeah, it's not a, it's not, remember the same plot? Remember? Yeah. No, it's none of that. It's just like, hey, and, and it's, it's refreshing because it's always like, oh, the heroes live at the end. Of, no, everybody fucking dies in this movie. Mm-hmm. Like everybody dies, of some every almost everybody of some importance dies. So, my like question to you, right? What do you think they could have done better, or what would you have like maybe wanted to see from Rogue One? I I know you rated a four point seven, but you know, like what takes it maybe to the next level? Uh, they pay me to watch it, I don't or. Know. They actually like just extended into the Death Star, like kind of getting blown up. Cause I think that's where that's what's heading in number four. Movie well, four. Yeah, but that's like at the end of four. So you'd have Got to you. just basically skip the whole movie. Got you. Um, I I really wouldn't change much. I think it was good as it is. Mm-hmm. Uh I feel like we didn't like Saw Guerrero was just kind of like a a link point. He was ever I understand for plot, but it just felt like you could have totally had it without Saw Gerrera. Really? You could have you could have had the same effect of a movie without Saw. He was a big character that I just hated to see go so early. Yeah, exactly. Like they killed him off so soon, it's just kind of like, hey, oh, bye. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, I, like I said, I fucking thought he was badass. I would have loved to have seen him in like one of those final fighting scenes or something. Because yeah. I mean that. 
he uh he brought a level of passion to hating the empire that i didn't really see from any other character like everyone was like all right we gotta stop him right that like mutual agreement like this is bad we gotta do something it's up to us but like he like fucking embraced that shit to the max well you gotta think a lot of these people probably weren't around for the change of the you know the galactic republic into the empire Mm -hmm. a lot of these people were like Babies. It's like it's like us with 9-11. Yeah. We don't yep. vividly remember that day, but we remember like Everything, the surrounding things. Yeah. It's it's kind of the same thing. Like they probably weren't alive, or if they were, they were very young for Order 66. Mm-hmm. Which was like a huge which when you watch episode three, it's just like a huge you're like, oh, this is the turning point in the series. Like this is where everything goes to what was originally made in four, five, and six. Got it. Got it. Um, so they're just kind of fighting because that's all they know. Was there anything that we missed, like favorite part wise? Because I feel like we hit a lot of like the no. things that Christian Christian covered mine, which was just Darth Vader fucking being a fucking dramatic <sighs> asshole for the. Uh, our he did that for us. Yeah, no, I just have to jump it like seeing the, seeing Darth Vader for the first time. Yeah, you've never seen Darth Vader. Seeing Darth Vader for the first time, I mean, doesn't get any better than uh. I think what they missed for me in that scene and i seeing him was badass enough and then hearing his lightsaber go off was sick but i could have i could have done with like a a sick ass like metal score type like some sort of like build up to just fucking him demolishing everybody you know what i mean like like i said with mandalorian that's just not very star warsy it's all Mm -hmm. very cinematic and orchestral but you got it I, i fucking got a taste of it when they were you know and mando in the last episode where they had the dark troopers and you know the director yeah, I know. I, I'm starting to see it, you know, like where, where they want to take it and see like Star Wars in a whole is pop culture, but I feel like Mando is more pop culture mm-hmm. Hello. than, than yeah. say Rogue One. Rogue One is just like, hey, here's a movie in this series. It's really good. Mandalorian's like, hey, all these cool people. What do cool people? What do all these people like EDM? Let's put EDM Fuck. in here. The fucking trending on Twitter. That's what the Mandalorian is. Literally. All right, man. So, That's- Christian, what do you what do you rate this on pineapples? Then we got to get George's. Okay, um, I'll say it's probably like four point two, which okay, it, which is still good, which is pretty good. Um, it's 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 just that like, okay, looking at Star Wars, we'll say we got the this this one is maybe I, I think the original trilogy is the best. Okay, that's pretty pretty standard. Then after that. It's. I think it's better than some of the prequels. Maybe not as good as Episode Three, but Rogue One I might like a little bit more than Episode One or Two. Definitely more than one, and sli- I think for me slightly more than two. And then obviously I don't have to talk about any of the rest of them. No, because they're not important. <laughs> so, um, but it's really good. Um, something that I didn't bring up was that like, I remember I was I was talking with a friend and he's like. You know, the characters are really boring. Um, when it's a Star Wars movie, you know, you expect a certain level of of uh, character development and yada, yada, yada. And I was and my response to like that kind of criticism was like they specifically stated that this is a Star Wars story. They made that distinction. They just yeah. said this isn't part of the trilogy because guess what, my boy? Oh, this isn't your standard Star Wars movie. This is that fucking saving Private Ryan shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I, I like seeing like the, the world building go into these other genres. Obviously, the Mandalorian, we got that badass spaghetti western thing going on. This is like a, a kind of like bleak war movie. Right. Um, and I think they hit the nail on the head. So, yeah, I feel like really good. I feel like they had that more distinction of like, hey, here's all these important people who just like weren't around very often because they had to do things that ended up costing them their lives for the benefit of the I'm going to say the plot because we know where the plot goes, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but in the world, it's kind of like for the, you know, they had to get that Death Star plan up so they would know what's happening, you know, how to take it down. So I feel like to contradict what your friend says, I think it's better that they didn't because it was like, all right, we got to introduce all these characters. All right. Now we got to drag it out three more movies and it kind of loses it. I feel like with them, it was like less is more. Yeah, it was punchy. It's like. You see, like the and like, because like Jen Erso, her her little arc is like, oh, she grew up in a like a war type situation, and like she was exploited by war. You know, she's either fighting wars or imprisoned through her life, and then 
you know, she had to, she lost her father and she realized like, oh, I'm a fighter. So I have to like carry the torch and, you know, you see her inner workings and you sympathize with her and uh, Cassian and all the other characters. You're like, oh shit, I feel what they're fighting for. And then by the time that like they're, you know, her and Cassian are looking at the fucking sunset and then whoosh, fucking Hiroshima happens. <laughs> Like it's, it's a really, it's a really impactful moment and it's always emotional watching it. So it hit the mark and it made great continuity in Star Wars. So I would give it like a, a, a good pass. So excellent. So what about you, George? What do you rate this first time seeing it? First Star Wars movie. Yeah. It just so I feel huge. like it's even bigger. Yeah. And I almost like, I, like I said before, I kind of wanted you to, to start with like four, five, six, maybe then one, two, three, then Rogue One. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, I can't stop you. Can't you? Can't well. I wanted. Like, to I watched it. two. <laughs> I wanted to do it. no because I started on one before, and that's I just it wears me out, bro. Like I just, I don't know. It's that old st- style of graphics and one like the first one that was made or yeah. episode one. Okay, so number four, whichever one just looks old as fuck. Like whatever one was made in nineteen eighty. The seventies, you mean? Yeah, that's four. That's four, five, and six. So it's it's the first ones that came out, but in the series, it's four, five, and six. Yeah. Um. Seeing this, I I was definitely like, man. I almost wish that, like, this was the first ever like Star Wars movie because I just feel like there's so much, so many different places you can go to it from here. Um. I want it. I've been thinking like ever since you guys are talking, I've been wanting to give this a five. I just can't. I, I can't because I think about like what goes into my criteria of a five. And that is like legitly just being invested in every single second. Not saying that I wasn't invested in this movie, but I wasn't invested to a five level. Not like Borat or like a night before the night oh, before. Yeah. And I'm, I'm a comedy guy. I get it. I need a. I need that bit of comedic relief. I wish there was more droids out there. Those passive aggressive little sons of bitches. I'm going to give it a 4.5. I think it was amazing. It hit all the action that I wanted. Um, I want in the future to hit more on like some serious characters. I feel like Galen, the, the, the father, um, I'm not sure if, is he portrayed at at any other points, bro? He seems like one of the most, important people um that ever worked on the death star and i just wanted to know like you know because he was working for them before like how that all tied in and and i felt like we missed that yeah you kind of have to make a lot of assumptions well and you can make those assumptions if you've seen the rest of the movies Mm -hmm. uh one through i would say seven eight nine but it's still the Skywalker saga, but one through six is literally just the story arc. I mean, yes, there's multiple story arcs, but it's mostly Anakin slash Darth Vader. Mm -hmm. You know, it's his rise and fall and eventually like redemption. Like, uh, George Lucas made four, five and six, which on its own has resolution. And then he said, I made one, two and three to explain how Darth Vader came to be. Mm -hmm. So like, that's, that's why, I'm I'm look I and I know I'm I'm talking about somebody that fucking it plays a microscopic yeah role and how big this is but it seemed like for this film the, he is huge you know what I mean and we got glimpses of him and um cuz I would I would have loved to like gone behind like uh, the the whole aspect of like creating the death star oh and, yeah that would be like, awesome you know, I, I but that's the thing with Star Wars that I feel it, it won't, it can't really ever end if you just keep getting good directors that truly love the story, because you can explain just everything, and in so much depth. Um, but yeah, I'll give it a four point five. I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm hoping uh to to continue watching the movies. Um, and I, I I'm sure even on our other episodes, if I do watch one, I'll I'll bring it up in like our what I what I watched this week you could and we probably can, honestly just watch it and we wouldn't even have to rewatch it. We could, we would already know what's going on. Oh, of course. On. Of course. I hope you, yeah. Based on all the conversations we had, I no, but like, I'll bring it up when I, once I start watching them, I feel like we need to start doing these like maybe for episodes, but with episode three, we got to bring, we got to bring Franny on. Okay. Cause I don't know. Episode three I just has so, has so much gravity. 
like just from an emotional standpoint, like a visual standpoint, and then from like a story standpoint. It's just, I don't know. That's why I think three is one of the best. It just ties everything together and makes like the whole story just like that much more depressing. I know I've said that a lot, but I just, I might have to go watch that tomorrow. Love it. Love it. But uh, it's, it, we're, we're running out of time here. We got to wrap things yeah, up. So uh, yeah. What does your watch say? Says or it's almost it midnight. I need to shave my arm a little. It's fucking hairy. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, you all know where to find us. Instagram, yep. Facebook, Twitter, Lukewarm Cinema Podcast. For everybody watching on the YouTubes, everything will be in the link or in the description down below. Mm-hmm. Uh, for those just listening on the podcast, yes, this will also be on YouTube. We're going to probably start doing that. I want to yeah. say almost every episode. I feel like it's... Might as well, right? This yeah, we, worked out Joey, perfect. Joey got us real hooked up with that nice-ass camera. Now we're using the, the webcam, webcam. <laughs> but we make it work. The audio sounds good, so that's all that matters. But, uh, you know, until next time, everybody, Jen Kui. Jin Kui. Kui.